All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, some landmark news yesterday. The Biden administration leaking to the Washington Post. They will withdraw all U.S. forces from Afghanistan by September 11th, 2021. My immediate reaction was, hmm, let's say the details. I've seen this movie before. Trump said he would withdraw troops. It didn't happen. Obama said he'd do it. That didn't happen. And in 2016, it still didn't happen. So it's very early days, but the Biden administration finally said the magic words. And I want to stress, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to stick by it come September 11, 2021. But the fact that they are saying this is immensely significant. In background briefings, the Biden administration tells reporters specifically their September 11th deadline for withdrawal is, quote, not based on conditions. Hmm. Let me explain why this is so important. The way the Pentagon has bamboozled every president before us into staying in Afghanistan is this. They say, oh, sure, we can leave Afghanistan, but we can't do it until the violence in the country goes down. So every president says, oh, well, that sounds reasonable. And they say, OK, we're going to get out by X date when we have the opportunity to retake more territory from the Taliban and reduce the violence. That is called a conditions-based withdrawal. Well, obviously, what happens is that the violence just continues. The Taliban take more territory, and the Pentagon says, well, sir, we can't leave because the Taliban are still violent, leaving aside the fact that the very reason for the violence itself is specifically because of the U.S. occupation. That only recently, after the Trump administration, signed a peace deal with the Taliban, and they committed to a withdrawal did we even see a reduction in real violence? That tells you everything you need to know. So with a hard deadline now, the Biden administration has removed the only real obstacle to withdrawal. But that does not mean that this deal cannot go south. And while I am incredibly optimistic and thrilled at this news, I have seen this movie too many times not to be weary of the usual ending, which is why I want to lay out for all of you what I think the single biggest obstacle to this entire deal will be. That is the Afghan government itself and its allies in Washington. If you're unfamiliar with the politics of Afghanistan, here is a brief primer. Basically, there are three entities. There are the Taliban and the tribes which are loyal to it. There's the Afghan government and the tribes which are loyal to it. And then there are U.S. troops. Our mission since 2002 has been to stand up the Afghan government so they can fight their own war against the Taliban and its allies and eventually just turn the country over to them. One big problem. The Afghan government is incredi incredibly corrupt, and it has been ever since Hamid Karzai was in charge. It is a motley crew of characters who are a lot more interested in padding their bank accounts in Dubai than actually governing their country, and they have been a historic failure at politically uniting the country and fighting the Taliban. For reference, the United States has spent $100 billion trying to fix the Afghan National Security Forces, and the Taliban today controls more territory than ever. So when Trump came along and he signed this deal with the Taliban, it ruffled a lot of feathers in Kabul because they were not part of the deal. The deal specifically said, we're leaving. You guys need to stop the violence. And it left it up to us to tell the Afghans that they need to strike a political deal with the Taliban to either share power or to have some peace agreement with them. That's the problem. The problem is that the peace stops the gravy train for the government. We pay hundreds of millions of dollars to the Afghan government to support their war against the Taliban every year. We embed our troops with them. We train them. We equip them. We pay for their gas. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. If that industry stops on a dime, if we have actual peace there, it would cost them a lot of money. This is why Biden's own secretary of state sent a harsh letter to the president of Afghanistan telling him to get wise and that he needs to strike a peace deal with the Taliban quickly, which may involve some power sharing agreement. I have learned over the years of covering this conflict to be incredibly cynical. I believe the greatest threat to our withdrawal is an intrinsic Afghan government, which will do everything in its power to get us to stay. And that includes delaying peace talks, but worse, it includes working with the bipartisan group of neocons right here in Washington, who remain incredibly powerful. Immediately after Biden administration's announcement, McConnell came out blazing, saying that it's a grave mistake. McConnell and many GOP senators remain neocons at heart, motivated by genuine belief, and some defense contractor support doesn't hurt. Hmm. Their ideological allies are what I call, though, the left neocons, who made themselves known in that Washington Post piece, 
quoted saying, some officials have warned that a U.S. exit will lead to the collapse of Kabul government while jeopardizing gains made over the last two decades in health, education, and women's rights. They also reared their ugly head over the weekend in that ridiculous CNN piece titled, Concerns Mount that U.S. Withdrawal from Afghanistan Will Risk Progress on Women's Rights. The Afghans know us better than ourselves. It's usually the case whenever you're conning somebody. And they are going to mount a full court press to the right neocons that if we leave, another 9-11 is going to happen Im imminently. And to the left neocons that if we leave, women's rights in the country will be obliterated. Do not fall for any of this for a second. The United States has spent nearly a billion dollars on women's rights issues in Afghanistan. It is plenty. We have stayed for 20 years. If it's not solved by now, it never will be. And most importantly, it is up to them to figure it out for themselves. I'm going to be watching this like a hawk for the next several months. And as you read the news, you need to do your best to look for the signs. There's going to be a lot of jet fuel burned from Kabul to Washington, and they have allies all over town. This is our final fight on this issue, and I really hope that our side actually wins this thing. That's the thing, Crystal, here, which is that I want to give as much credit to the Biden administration as possible. They did something which Obama and Trump never had what they did to stand up to the Pentagon and say, no, I'm not falling for your conditions-based withdrawal bullshit. We are leaving on September 11th, 2021. All troops except for the ones in the embassy, which is what we did in Iraq back in 2011. And I would consider that an actual withdrawal, as long as the contractors aren't all out there, CIA, et cetera. There's a lot of caveats. But that doesn't mean this deal can't go south. And peace is not good for the bottom line, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Who are the ones... If you ever come to Washington, there's like this death's door alley of all those defense contractors right across the river with their like grotesque towers, mm -hmm. like Northrop, Ray Raytheon, you know, Lockheed Martin. Who do you think get, uh, sells all their stuff to the Afghan government? And who do you think pays the bills for all of that? It's yeah. all of us here in the government. And they are going to fight tooth and nail. It's, it's crazy, too, because of how bipartisan this is. My, Mitch McConnell wasn't the only senator who came out blazing. Gene Shaheen, Democrat from New Hampshire. I am deeply disappointed in President Biden's, you know, in President Biden's decision here. This is a very bipartisan just, thing. And it's just incredible because these are the type of people that, like, she would never say anything else critical about Biden, but like I know. this is this the, is the issue. only one. This, this is, is the, the only one. one. And like you said, it, it's not an accident. So the hopeful, the hopeful take is that. Biden's been in Washington for a long ass time, and he has seen this movie many times before That's as true. well, That's including true. up close for eight years in the Obama White House. Um, people were sharing an old tweet from Barack Obama that said something like, Vice President Biden yes. says we will absolutely <laughs> be out of Afghanistan in 2014. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's not exactly what it right. said, but that's basically the gist of it. And uh, so the hopeful take is that he's actually learned something from that. And he's seen the, the gaslighting. He's seen the lies. He's seen the way that the people who are making this case are making it cynically, mm -hmm. both on the, the side. The, I like the way you put it, like the right wing side of the, yes. the fear monger. Oh my, it's going to be a another 9-11 if we leave That's Afghanistan. A, that'll be Lindsey Graham. Well, yeah. Lindsey Graham, here's what he said. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. A full withdrawal from Afghanistan is dumber than dirt and devilishly dangerous. President Biden will have, in essence, canceled an insurance policy against another 9-11. Yeah. I knew it. So the right wing take yeah. is that. Meanwhile, it's not an accident that we've been seeing all these takes and all these news articles about like, oh, my God, women's rights. The CNN and piece makes a lot more sense now. It, yeah. Exactly right. That didn't come out of nowhere. That's because people who were close to this decision saw the wheels turning and the wheels in motion. And this was their desperate attempt mm -hmm. to try to make like the woke case against withdrawing from Afghanistan. So those forces are apparently not holding that much sway on Biden right now. But like you said, there is a lot of money at stake here. There's a lot of money in political contributions. There's a lot of money in terms of um, actual bottom line being made in this town. There's a lot of money being made by the uh, Afghani government. There's a lot of people with vested interests, not to mention some of the local jobs that get created by the, the uh, defense contracts as well. So there are a lot of people who have skin in this game, and they're going to throw everything they can against the wall to try to stop this. I have my four-year-old, Ida. Mm. When she throws a tantrum, when she can't get her way, she goes through this cycle of, like, 
And it really, it's, it's actually quite something to watch. Mm. First, it's just like rage and anger and she's throwing a fit. And then she'll collect herself right. and she'll try to like rationalize with me and make, make a rational case of why she should have this thing. She'll ask really nicely and mm. then she'll just cry and be really super sad. And she just goes through this cycle of every single thing she can possibly think of in her little toolkit yeah. to try to get her way. And that's exactly what we are already witnessing in this. So we're like, wait. let's try threatening that. Oh, it's going to be a 9 11. Let's mm-hmm. try saying this is, this is anti feminist. This is against women's rights. Let's try that. We're going to see maybe like a job angle, like you're going to kill job. Anything that they can possibly think of. And there will be threats behind the scenes. And this is what makes the national security state or the deep state or whatever you want to call it so powerful is that their threats of we're going to leak this and that to the press oh, yeah. and bring down your presidency are not something to be trifled with. So that is what Biden is ultimately up against here. And by extending the deadline to September, he's also given them a little bit more time to work on him to try to make that withdrawal conditions dependent rather than just an absolute red line. We're out. We're out. It doesn't matter what's going on. We're gone. Just wait. Look, I mean, Trump tried this several times. Six guys, six more months and we're going to get out. Six more months. And they were like, no, no, no. Well, whole sure. Presidency. The whole presidency he never was able to accomplish it and actually stand up to the generals. And they are experts at this. I covered that piece of them in the L.A. Times, you know, talking to the journalists, being like, Hey, if we leave, you know, the Taliban's going to come in. I see Max Boot saying the U.S. is abandoning all the little girls going to school, all the women in the workforce, all the brave. Shut up. You don't actually care about any of these people. Max Boot's a good point, though, because guess what? All these people, Bill, all these people who are going to make these terrible arguments, neocons, guess what? They've been built up by MSNBC and CNN to be like liberal heroes and trusted by the audience. So now when these clowns make statements like that, a lot of liberals take them seriously and good, believe what is, they say. That is such an important... That's why we warned about it at the time. I'm like, you don't want to empower these people. They believe dangerous things. They've got us into wars. Their ideology rules D.C. They are have ideological allies all across the Pentagon and the State Department and more. You think people who built their whole careers on these failed programs want to admit they're a failure? They can't do that. They need more money in order to prove, like, oh, this time we'll build a well and everything will materialize. They have failed in ways that they cannot even comprehend, and they need to keep this gravy train going. They're going to, like you said, they're going to throw the tantrum. They're going to, you know, plead. If that deadline comes, it's very possible he could reverse course because they always find some way in order to try and get us stay. And we'll watch it very, very closely. You're about to see a million op-eds in prestige media about thousands of ways why yes. this is a disaster from this way and that way, et cetera, to right. appeal, uh, to attempt to appeal to every segment of the American public. Do That's not right. buy it. All right, I'm looking forward to your radar next, Crystal.